Would you guys welcome my friend, Louis Giglio. You guys can have a seat. Thank you so much. Man, what a great confession. Uh, We're calling this, I think you knew this already, the How Great Is Our God Tour. Um, Not just because God has given Chris this phenomenal song that circled the globe, but we're calling it the How Great Is Our God Tour because we are here tonight worshiping a God that is far beyond anything we could ever dream of or imagine. We are here tonight to worship a huge, massive God of grace and glory. If there's anything that can happen tonight, our heart is that we will leave tonight with at least a couple of things having happened to us. One being that our view of God will be completely blown up all over again and that the view that we have of God will be expanded in this place tonight. And that we will leave here with the confidence that he is able to hold on to us and hold us together no matter what circumstances come our way in this lifetime. And if you were with us uh, on the indescribable tour, we sort of took a swing at that first part, looking at the bigness of God and the greatness of the universe. Anybody make it out to the indescribable tour, by the way, if you guys were there? The story of it in a nutshell was that the heavens are telling the glory of God. Their expanse declares the work of his hands. In other words, all you have to do is look up and you see the size of the God that we're worshiping tonight. We ended that, just a little review with this galaxy right here, the Whirlpool Galaxy. You're like, man, alive. We're talking about astronomy at a Christian worship service. Why not? The God that we're worshiping tonight is the one who created that right there. It's called the darling of astronomy. The reason why is it's sitting completely perpendicular to us on earth. And when we look up at it, we get this beautiful view. But check this out. The Whirlpool Galaxy is 31 million light years away from where you're sitting right now. Okay, they got nothing in here tonight. 31 million light years away. That's just the first little thing we got to catch up with tonight. By the way, the story opens like this. In case you forgot, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. And that was a phenomenal moment when that happened because light came out of the mouth of God traveling 186,000 miles a second. That's how fast light is traveling through the universe. And so a light year, therefore, is how far light travels in one year. And I'll do the math for you. It's 5.88 trillion miles is a light year. So as we talked about before, when you start to get around in the neighborhood of God, the mile is not going to help you. The yardstick, the ruler, the tape measure, these things are of no value in the universe that God has made. We're using a ruler called a light year that's 5.88 trillion miles long. And if you'd like to go to the Whirlpool Galaxy, be my guest. All you have to do is multiply 31 million, that's how many light years it is away, by 5.88 trillion miles, and that's the distance that you've got to cover. Anybody with me so far? I'm I'm wondering, are there any science lovers here tonight? Because we're going to have a little scientific content tonight, and I need to know if anybody's going to be with me so far. So you do the math, or you could look at it a different way. You just have to travel 186,000 miles a second for 31 million years, and voila, you will arrive at the Whirlpool Galaxy. Second thing that's pretty stunning, given that our God made that, is it contains 300 billion stars in that one galaxy, 300 billion stars. And it is one of hundreds of billions of other galaxies in the known universe that God has made. And it just reminds us all over again tonight, man, this God that we're singing to tonight, he's enormous. He's bigger than anything we've ever dreamed of. He's bigger than our wildest imagination of him. But we ended by looking inside that thing, and this is pretty stunning. Those of you who've seen it remember, but the Hubble Space Telescope is circling the Earth at 360 miles above the Earth, and it takes amazing images of these galaxies and other phenomenon of of the cosmos, and it looked into that white core of the Whirlpool Galaxy, and lo and behold, there is a black hole in there. And we'd never seen it before until Hubble could take an image of it, and I found this on NASA's site, hubblesite.org. This is what... Hubble sent back to us from 31 million light years away from the black hole core of the Whirlpool Galaxy. They send us back this image right here. And it's just crazy. It's crazy. 
It's the glory of God, the grandeur of God. It's the grace of God and the mercy of God everywhere we look. It's the imprint of God in all of creation, everywhere we turn. And tonight we just want to begin with the bigness of God, the, the grandeur of God all over again. We're going to do it by looking at four stars. Can, can you handle four stars tonight? The first one's easy because there's just one star in our solar system and that star is called the... Sun, thank you very much. Yes, it's our own star. It's, uh, there's an image of it for you, by the way. It's a little more fierce than we often think. It's 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface, but what I want you to see about it is how big it is. It's 93 million miles away, so when you're looking up in the sky, it's pretty good pace out there. By the way, light traveling 186,000 miles a second, it's only taken eight minutes to cover that 93 million mile journey to touch your skin here in Atlanta, Georgia. But what I want you to see is the size of it. It's like a million times the size of the earth, and that matters to us tonight when you hear what the psalmist said. Listen to his words. By the word of the Lord, this is Psalm 33, the heavens were made. In other words, God didn't lift a finger when he made the universe. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. But he goes on to say, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. So we're looking at something so intense that we don't want to get any closer than 93 million miles away, which is what we are right now. And then we read that God just breathes out stars. It's crazy to think about it. A million times the size of the earth. So here's a little perspective that sort of changed my life. If the earth were the size of a golf ball, okay, the sun would be 15 feet in diameter. Okay, that didn't seem to move anybody either. So let me try it a different way. Let me just try it just a different way. I thought I might need this, so I brought a golf ball, okay? So all through the evening, this is going to represent earth, all right? So this is where we are. I need everybody in the building to look as closely as you can and find yourself, okay? And when you've found yourself, I want you to nod your head so that I know you've located you on the earth, okay? You're nodding your head? Okay, you found yourself. If the earth were a golf ball, the sun would be 15 feet in diameter. That's not 15 feet in diameter. Can we blow that up just a hair and maybe give them 15 feet in diameter? So here's a little perspective for you, okay? Is this working for anybody? Here we are on the earth, and that's the sun. It's so big. It's so big, you could put... 960,000 earths inside the sun. So if the earth were a golf ball and the, and the sun were 15 feet in diameter, you could put 960,000 golf balls inside that 15 foot in diameter sun. That's enough golf balls, by the way, because I know that seems like a big number to fill a school bus with golf balls could fit inside the 15 foot in diameter sun. It's a massive star and it's one of hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, our cul-de-sac in the neighborhood called the cosmos that God has made. It's huge and we're worshiping a star breathing God tonight. But I want to tell you about the second star, okay? Because the second star absolutely wrecked my life. I heard about it when I was a high school student here in Atlanta. One of our youth leaders did a talk and he mentioned this star. I didn't know how to talk to God for about two months after I heard about this star. It's called Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse. You can pick your pronunciation. I'm obviously.